What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm out here in the shop tonight getting ready to do an oil change on my semi here. Um, I'm over the mileage on my oil change that where I wanted to change it. So um, I want to do an oil sample on this and I knew I was going to go over but I had some other stuff I uh, was busy doing and whatnot and so I just put it off and I wanted to uh, to go over even a little bit more because I want to do an oil sample. So I ordered a kit here from uh, Blackstone Laboratories. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of them. Uh, they're pretty common on some of the oil forms and stuff I've read in the past. Anyway, they send you this bottle here. It's a bottle inside a bottle. They send you an envelope here to put this back in, uh, free shipping back to them. And uh, like I say, it's a bottle in a bottle. You collect the oil in here. Um, there's a little uh, oil absorber pad in there. You seal it up good. You put that bottle in this bottle, then put it all back in there and mail it back to them. Um, with a payment method and whatnot, and uh, they go over the oil sample and uh, look at everything and tell you uh, based off of your results that you send them and the stuff that you fill out on the piece of paper that's in here. Uh, we'll have to write down our mileage, what type of oil we use, what type of additives and everything. And uh, they'll tell you from that result um, if you are okay on the extended oil change or if you should have changed it like five or 10,000 miles ago like I probably should have. Um, we're setting at 25,550 miles uh, on this oil change. I've only added three quarts of oil to it. Now it is low, uh, it's barely touching the dipstick, so it is low at that uh, mileage. Um, but we're going to go ahead and change it. Also I wrote down the engine hours. Uh, whenever I change my oil, I write the engine hours down too. We're 797 engine hours because that, uh, you know, that accounts for engine idle time, whereas mileage does not uh, if you let the truck run a lot. So 797 engine hours, 25,550 miles uh, on this oil right here that's in there. Only added three quarts to it. Uh, we used uh, Traveler, Tractor Supply brand oil, 15W40. Um, and then I'll talk about the additives a little bit in a minute. Uh, but basically, a gallon of Lucas in there, and then I add some uh, zinc to it. Um, I think I put four bottles, four four ounce bottles of zinc in there for camshaft wear that I've been having. Uh, I've wiped out two camshafts on these ISXs. I know that these engines were designed before uh, they removed some of the zinc out of the oil. Um, I think these engines were designed like in 98, 97, 98. The oil back then had a higher level of zinc now they've reduced the zinc due to emissions and whatnot in the trucks that have uh, particulate filters on them. Uh, the zinc arms the particulate filter. So anyway, I've been adding a little bit uh, of zinc to the oil um, to hopefully eliminate buying another camshaft and another downtime and all that stuff to go with it. So anyway, I've got a red Solo cup over here. We're going to get up under here and uh, drain some of this oil out of in and then try to pour it in here because if I try to catch it in this bottle here, it's probably just gonna be really messy. So I'm hoping I can catch some in the Solo cup and then uh, you know pour it into this without spilling it all over and having to wipe all this up and having an oily mess on my hands. So uh, let's get up under there and see what we can do. All right guys, hopefully you can see what's going on there. I've got my red Solo cup here and they do say that it's perfectly okay to put it in a another container uh, beforehand as long as the container is clean so obviously that's a brand new cup never been used it should be clean oil pan sliding over here drain pan and we got our extended ratchet here because this plug seems to always get tighter on its own There we go. And it says you do not want to catch the first of the oil or the last of the oil coming out of the pan. You want to catch some that's in the middle. That way any dirt that's around the plug and the first that comes out is uh, not transferred into your oil sample. And you don't want to catch the last that's coming out because whatever sediments on the pan is going to be trying to come out. So you want to catch some midstream.
Alrighty, here we go. Thanks for coming out now. Alright, you ready? Yeah, we're gonna get this thing going. Oh yes. We got us a cup full. Way more than we needed. It also says you need to let your uh, truck warm up, you know, uh, to operating temperature or whatever. So that the oil's good and warm and will flow and everything's circulated in the oil like it should be, which we've already did all of that. It should be good on that. I'm just going to let this sit here and drain now while we get it up from under here and get this poured in our oil simple cup. All right guys, so I have never done this before. I've thought about it several times and I uh, finally decided to do it and make a video of it. And we're gonna see if we can pour what's in this cup or some of it, we don't need all of it. Obviously it's not gonna fit in here. But we'll pour some of it in here and uh, fill this bottle on up, leave a little bit from the top. It says they need three ounces to do all their testing. So I don't know how many ounce bottle this is, probably about a four is what it looks like. Um, but anyway, we'll send this off and when the results come back i will finish this video and we'll see what we got how bad is it to go over on the oil change or is it really that bad and we'll see what the additives that i've added in here is that a good thing or is it a bad thing or what so Set that down without knocking it over. Didn't spill a drop. Seal that up good. And then I will uh, wipe this off. I just got a little bit off my hands on there. Slip it down in the other bottle and there's a piece of paper in there we got to fill out with all their mileage information and uh, engine information um, to include in the, in the kit when we send it. And then uh, we'll simply drop it in the mail. So I have a theory in doing this. I don't know if that theory is correct or not, but the later model Cummins engines and other manufacturers' engines um, are recommending longer and longer oil change intervals um, due to the oils these days are supposedly better and better. Um, but it seems like to me that you should be able to run an older engine longer than the newer one because the newer one has all the emissions on it uh, and the EGR on the newer engines and the particulate filter holding all the soot in where the older engines don't. Um, they still have EGR but maybe they're not using as much EGR or maybe some of the engines don't even have an EGR at all depending on the model of the engine. So my theory is that maybe you can extend, uh, safely extend the oil change intervals in the older engine instead of the usual 12,000 or 15,000 miles. Um, I usually uh, used to shoot for around 15,000, um, but where I have went over that before and uh, you know, it is what it is. But I decided that this time, since I seen I was over to go ahead and push it a little bit further and uh, we'll go ahead and send this stuff to the lab and that way with the extended range that I went they will actually I believe recommend an oil change interval say if they find that there's too much fuel too much soot in the oil uh, they'll recommend changes in it you know at a recommended interval based off of how much fuel soot particular whatever they found in the oil so that's what we're doing here I will come back to the video whenever I get the results from the lab back and tell you guys what it says. All right guys, so it has been about a month or month and a half since I started this video and I did the initial uh, oil analysis sample that I pulled out of the engine and sent it off. This is the results of that. I've edited out and erased my personal information off of there for obvious reasons. Um, the oil that we use was Traveler 15W40, 25,550 miles. And I believe that was a little over 800 engine hours, if I remember correctly. Um, you have to refer to the first part of the video um, when I did this a month and a half ago. Um, anyway, this is what uh, they sent me back. 
basically most everything looks good except for one thing and I'll go over that and I believe I may have caused that issue but uh, I'm gonna read this to you and uh, or let you read it yourself there that will probably be better I'll just let you read it but uh, basically everything looks good uh, even at this oil change interval now this is for my engine the Cummins i615 if you have a Hyundai or something don't try to run your oil 25,000 miles you'll probably be needing a new engine um, or if you have an f-150 or something that's not a good idea um, this is 18 wheeler so it's a whole different ball game it requires it holds a lot more engine oil and so you can run it a little longer but uh, anyway these results are based on parts per million as you see over here this is uh, my truck right here on the left this is the averages of all the oil samples that they do on uh, that they have done on the ISX 15 um, so if we look at this here I had to add three quarts of engine oil and we'll talk about this for just a minute as well I was trying to do this test without adding any engine oil and I knew that it was low on oil but I was trying to make it I wanted to do 25,000 miles without adding any oil because when you add oil it dilutes the oil and so you may get a better result than you would if you didn't dilute it so anyway that's the reason um, I was trying to do the oil change uh, or the testing without any result uh, without any adding oil so uh, anyway that's what I did as I ran it as long as I could I actually ran it until I started climbing a hill a pretty steep incline as I took off from a red light and I noticed my oil pressure was fluctuating which uh, if you're into motorsports know anything about that sort of stuff that's a common problem in a race car or anything with high g-forces uh, and high rpm uh, your engine will pump the oil to the top or it will the g-forces will cause it to be pushed back to the back of the oil pan or the side of the oil pan or depending on what the situation is and cause it to starve the oil pump pickup screen for oil anyway that's what was going on uh, here because um, I was that low on oil I pulled over and I added the three quarts of oil because I was forced to because of that now um, that leads me to this right here there's 49 parts per million on the lead which is comes off of your bearings um, their universal average for that is uh, three now I don't know how many miles that engine has on it I have seen some results on this that it should have been about half of that 49 with this many miles and stuff but that's what we're looking at and I think you know the oil starvation caused that number there to go up um, our iron is at 36 and what they're saying that could be caused by a lot of idling which uh, we had a lot of idling on this because it's been hot uh, over the summertime when I done this I idle my truck a lot I bump it up about 800 rpms and let it idle uh, to stay cool in there because I run at night a lot of times and sleep in the day so uh, anyway everything else uh, looks normal and even that is not a horrible result but I think those results are skewed a little bit because of my own doings and so what I'm going to do is I am going to get another uh, lab analysis done at 15,000 miles because if you see here these averages are based on 16,600 miles is what these averages over here are so we're comparing my numbers here at 25,000 to their numbers on an average of 16,000 miles but uh, anyway if we come down here because I add the zinc additive if we look at my zinc parts per million down here we're at 1365 on zinc um, if you go across they're only 1145 on zinc now zinc protects the camshafts um, from wear obviously and that's the reason I use it um, a couple other things that is also in that I think is molly um, my molly is 99 parts per million their standard is 40 is what their average is and see what else is in that phosphorus yeah the phosphorus is in that as well 1180 and then 989 is their average so uh, that's what we're looking at um, I went ahead and did the uh, additional paid the additional 10 bucks to have this testing done to tell us if there's any antifreeze in it which there should not be and there is not um, 
the viscosity of the oil looks okay. This is what the value should be on the right. That's what they are. So we're all in range with everything, even with that mileage. The flash point is correct. Uh, we have almost zero fuel dilution. So we were good on everything as far as the mileage goes. The, the thing I'm thinking is that that lead number and possibly the iron number being a little bit high right there um, is probably caused by me and the oil starvation that I noticed as I took off and was climbing that steep incline and the truck was low on oil. I knew the truck was low on oil. As I say, I was trying to do this test without adding any, but I had to pull over to add some because I seen the oil pressure fluctuating. Now it did not go to zero or anything like that, but I noticed it was fluctuating and I could tell what was going on and I, I know the truck and I knew what was going on. So I pulled over, put three quarts in it, that solved the issue. And uh, then I did the uh, oil, analysis, no, oil analysis after that. So uh, the following thing I'm gonna do, as I say, I'm gonna get a, a result at 15,000 miles and then we'll compare that with what their averages are see if that brings this number here down which i believe it will uh, some other stuff i've seen on the internet says usually your iron and your lead numbers uh, should be pretty close together the same so our lead numbers should be closer to this 30 something according to that result what i read but uh anyway i just want to throw this in the video here make this video and uh let you guys know what i got going on and so I'm gonna do one at 15,000. I'll make a video on that. And I'll try to put this in a playlist for you guys that want to look at this stuff later on. And um, also after I do the one at 15,000, I'm probably not gonna change the oil at that point. I'm going to just pull a sample, send that sample off so that I compare these numbers here to see these wear metals on the lead and the irons, the main thing I'm concerned about. Everything else looks excellent. And then I'm gonna leave that oil in there and I'm probably gonna stretch that oil out to 30,000 and run another test on it and see if we're still looking good at that. And then we will uh, make a decision to go from there and, and just to see what kind of results there is because I haven't seen anybody do this uh, and post any kind of video on it on YouTube. So uh, that's what I've been, been looking at. As I say, this was Blackstone Lab that done this report and uh, that is the results of it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next video.